Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, which school has the best shooters in the country? We find out at the Schools Challenge. But first, willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome to IWA, the greatest outdoor hunting show in the world. We've brought our British schoolboy humour to Nuremberg, where we'll be showing you what's on offer. <laughs> There's stuff here from all over the world, catering for all tastes and all legislations. Some of the kit on show would spark an armed response back in the UK quicker than this young lady created a queue of hot-blooded males. Whew. After that, I need to take the weight off in this tasteful chair. But there's no rest for the wicked. Time to look at some proper merchandise. There are plenty of Brits at the show. Some work for great companies from over here that are doing rather well over there, and others for great companies from over there keen to sell more over here. Browning, Morocco, Winchester, what's really popular this year? This year, more than ever, the new autos. The new Maxxis auto, camouflage auto, something that 10 years ago we thought we would never sell. Multi-shot, i.e. five or eight shot capacity um, semi-automatics. Again, 10 years ago we'd have sold one a year, now we're selling one a day. So the, the trade is changing all the time. I mean, this is uh, glass, steel, concrete, kind of the opposite of wild fowling, isn't it? Which is the people who use this gun the most, the pigeon shooters, that sort. Yep. I don't know how you can explain it. All of a sudden, the trend has changed into, this, into the new autos. And we just literally can't keep up production. What's the most unusual, unlikely, incredible thing you've seen here so far? Something that will never work, in, designed by a German, which is unusual, which is you tie the deer using brackets the rear of your legs and then walk like skis off the, off the hill. <laughs> it will never catch on, but the fellow's trying to sell them anyway. Brilliant, Andy, thank you very much. No problem at all. It's a great show for British to sell its best stuff abroad, but it's also perfect for anyone trying to reach the British market. Daniel Delorme is just one of them using the show to find a distributor in the UK, so maybe by now you don't have to cross the channel to get your hands on his beautiful rifles. There is an elephant, 20 yards over there. Yeah. Tell, tell me why this gun is absolutely perfect. For... Because it's uh, very light, Yes. very easy to him. He's coming towards you. Uh, we are going to mix faster. And uh, it's very a uh, lot of precision. Yes. Now you can save your life. OK, now it's quick. Straight to the shoulder, bang. Probably a bit higher. He's got very close. Um, and so it's not got a great big scope on top. It doesn't have a raised bit up here. Yeah. This is a classic, classic double rifle. But you can also adapt the, the scope you want. Mm. So you, you could put a scope on Absolutely. top? Absolutely. It's, the scope mount is already set up with a rifle. Oh, OK. OK. I love these iron sights. I love the way you, you just go straight to your shoulder, bomb, like that. And um, to save my life from the elephant, what's it going to cost me? Uh, it's going to cost you as from 6,000 euro to more. Right. Depending on the engraving specific you want. This is beautiful engraving, isn't it? But this one especially, well, yeah. The deer on one side, wild boar on the other. Perfect. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Innovation is also evident at the show, and there are some cunning ways of illustrating just how good your kit is, like ramming it into a piece of rock. But for this next item, I'm going to put the pressure on. A great showcase for great British products. I'm with Steve Rowe of Napier. Steve, what have you brought here today? Well, we've developed an entirely new type of gun bag. And let's face it, gun bags have been around for an awful long while. And it's very difficult to make major changes to that technology. But what we've come up with is this product called a Razorback, which Ooh, is based on our, touch it. our New Zealand uh, wild boar, which is incidentally where I'm from. So I've got some affinity with that. <laughs> um, and we've been making bags for over 25 years. And one of the things that we were really anxious to do was to try and build into this every feature that can hopefully give us a bomb-proof bag. Bomb-proof bag. Bomb-proof bag. 
Now this bag in itself is actually a soft-sided bag, yeah. so it's got all the normal benefits of a conventional bag, but yeah. when it's zipped up, what we call the razor back, which is the spine, is an EVA mould. So even with no gun in that bag, it'll take a 50 kilo vertical press. Can we, can we try and break it? Well, you could try and break it if you wish. We actually put a truck battery on the top of that in one of the magazines and ran it up. It's just yeah. bending. You just start to bend it there. But you've got a spine really? that's actually got all the strength that you require. Yeah. Now, if you've got an expensive hunting rifle with a nice scope on it, the last thing you need to do is to drop it out of the back of the truck and have to re-zero the scope when you're just about to go Absolutely shooting. Right. So it's about as strong as you can possibly make. The other thing that we've built into it is the fact that zippers tend to be a, a, a weak point on almost any soft-sided luggage. You, you say, you've sold it to me, Steve. I'll take five. Just right. a five. Which colour would you like? I'll, I'll start with this one. Thank <laughs> That's you right. Okay, here you go. Now, we didn't do that well at the Olympics, but someone who did is Anschutz the German company which produces rifles for the biathlon. They have the bulk of the market for small bore rifles in this discipline. You won quite a lot of medals personally at the Olympics, didn't correct, you? Correct, correct. Without taking part, how, do, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, you know, we have about, uh, about 95, 93, 95 uh, percent market shares in the biathlon. Uh, yeah, just tell me what biathlon is for, for the English. Okay, students. biathlon is a sport where you make cross country and uh, shooting on 50 meters with a small bore rifle. This is skiing? It's skiing, yeah. So you ski and after you have no breath anymore, you go for the shooting on the shooting range and shoot. And it's very critical, you know, to, to hold the rifle without movements. The biggest advantage of this rifle is a straight pull. That means you only pull back with your finger and with a thumb uh, you push back. So it's very fast, very quick, and this is a big advantage from shooting. Uh, so this is like the, is similar to the Blaser style? No, it's a different, it's also a straight pull, but it's a different kind of system. Okay, and what are those red things on the front? The, the magazines. Oh, of course. And this is a very harsh metal butt, why is it so, why is it so hard? It, it, it's, it's aluminium. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're shooting without any closing, only with a, a running suit, and this gives you a nice contact. You know. Good. That's it. And they're not allowed to use telescopic sights, are they? No. Open sides. Wow, that makes it very, very difficult. And of course, finally, for the snow, you've got the cap on the end. Exactly. Usually you should uh, close it after you shoot because when it's uh, uh, raining or snowing, it can... Ra raining in Vancouver, wasn't it? Ex exactly. <laughs> and uh, if you don't take care, it can get rusty when the water is inside. It's not good for shooting. So close it, you are out of trouble. Good, Uber, thank you. You're welcome. Some of the rifles here make Dirty Harry's Magnum look like a spud gun. There are also a few guns that make the wrong impression, even though they'd be legal at home. This is actually legal in the UK. It's a 2-2, same sort of thing you use for rabbits and rats. Tiny bit uh, militaristic though. Uh, might not do shooting sports any favours if you actually buy one. Now for those who would rather shoot people than targets, there's the growing sport of airsoft. And this crazy chap drove this Jeep from the Czech Republic to generate an interest in this growing sport. OK, now tell me, what is airsoft? Uh, airsoft, it's a style of war game, similar like the paintball. You use the guns which looks like realistic. You shot 6mm uh, plastic BBs uh, to each other. And oh. when you are hitting, uh, it's not so dangerous. I think that the... Uh, you suffer similar pain like when you are hit by the paintball or maybe less. Okay, okay. But it's on uh, honesty because um, airsoft ga guns make no no cow. No, on no, you. no bruising. So you must honestly say, oh, I am hit and go out. <laughs> now, they look very, very real. I mean, if I was seen walking around the street in England with one of those, I think I'd probably get shot. Uh, I think that in England you have the same law uh, and that's the same in Czech, you cannot openly use it on public. Okay. You can use it only in the closed areas. But it is a toy, it's just a good looking one. Um, according to law it's not a toy, okay. it's an air gun. Mm -hmm. But of course it is uh, more similar to the toys than to the real guns. You cannot uh, seriously hit anyone with this gun, no. you cannot kill him. No. This show has evolved over the years and it's not just hunting anymore. There's also police kit here, including riot shields and tasers. And if I did predict a riot, thankfully, these guys look like they're dressed to deal with it. But if you didn't see it coming, you should have got a pair of Zeiss binos. 
the German company has a huge stand and presence at Ewa this year. Carl Zeiss, you're not really Carl Zeiss, you're John Rigby. Now, what's a, what's a nice British boy like you do working for a German company like this? I look after the, the UK sales side of things for the hunting, law enforcement and military markets for, for Zeiss, Carl Zeiss, yeah. And it's a huge stand here. It's massive, it's, it's brilliant this year, it's really, really good. What, do you, what um, do you mean by brilliant? What, what do you want out of the show? Um, well, for us, we, we have a lot of the press, like yourselves, turning up. We take them through our new products, such as the Duralites. Uh, we've got a new telescope. Uh, the field spotting scope as well. Okay, we can show plugs, that. Enough plugs, come yeah, on. well, you know, you've got to get them in there. Got to get them in there. Um, but no, we, we, it's a chance for us to see uh, it all in one place. Um, all the products we have got in the range, all the new products. We can take the press through those products. Um, we can actually display them, and they can have a look and have a, you know, next best thing to being in the field with them, really. Or obviously, also all of our dealers come over, all our bigger dealers, especially, come over, um, and we'll be talking to them about placing orders for the for the next year so you can look through Zeiss products you can, you can see people on the Leupold and Schmidt and Bender stand over there you can see them looking that, at you can't that, you we can yeah <laughs> we can get them in our crosshairs yeah <laughs> That's what you so want. yeah so um, yeah but for instance we've got down there um, um, a stand set up so that you can see the difference between the new FL glass that's in, the, in, in some of the new scopes and the old style and you can actually physically see the difference in the quality then of the images so it's little things like that um, and obviously it's, the, it's the, the European trade show, everyone's here. For us as well, it's a chance to meet up with old friends and new friends um, from the Zeiss community, if you like, you know, from the different markets, Scandinavia, you know, uh, Spain, France, they're all here. Um, and to, to meet HQ, you know, all the people in Germany. So it's, it's, a, it's a great few days. I really enjoy it every year. So it's really good. Yeah. Apart from you. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> The recession last year meant that the show was not big on product launches. But there are lots of green shoots of recovery in the gun trade. Literally. I, for example, have found a bloke from Bulgaria who makes bespoke shooting suits in real tree camouflage. So for the last word in camouflagery, I have a little man in Bulgaria. Ilya, nice to see you. You've got something for me. Yes, I have. I'm so excited about this. I have. I that looks was prepared for you. Fantastic. A special jacket. Oh, it's got my name in it. Yes, That's it's special so made for, for you by measurement. So this is this is like Savile Row camouflage, Savile Row real tree camouflage, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's real tree. And it fits me perfectly because I sent you the measurements yes. two weeks ago. Yes. And you have this made for me now. Just uh, where? Slip my jacket off, <laughs> okay. sir. And try it on. Terrific. Yes. Oh, that is. It's bust. It's like a glove. Wow. That's fantastic. Instead of entering the changing room like Mr. And ben, I've come over all Wonder Woman. <laughs> That's better, especially as suits like this start at just 150 euros. What a fabulous show, what hilarious products, and they could be coming to a shop near you. Now, Field Sports Britain wouldn't be Field Sports Britain without real shooting, so we're going back to England. We're at Oxford at the Oxford Gun Company, which is holding the Schools Challenge today. 170 children from 35 schools are competing. Let's find out which is the best. Team or individual has a coach. Doug Florent, of host of the Oxford them. Gun Company, Please briefs the shooters as they arrive throughout the day. Teams. Teams Although the emphasis is for the kids to have fun and stay and safe, this is school on school action, so there's a strong sense of competition. William Allen of Kyneton High School is definitely keen to win. Do you reckon you're going to, you're going to smash those more uh, field top shots? I think so, yeah. yeah. We've got a few very good lads. Excellent. So, yeah. How many people in your team? Uh, five. Is there five in every school team? I think so, yeah. 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 Right, and, uh, and all the people, what, what age are you? I'm 14, nearly 15. And, and how old are the people in your team? Uh, I think the oldest is 15. So yeah, I'm in year 10 and the eldest is in year 11. So we're all very close. And, and how long have you been shooting for? Oh, I think it's four or five years. 
I think, yeah. So. And, and this is your second year at the school's challenge? Yeah, the second time I've done here, yeah. One is a looper, right Some left. of the schools have fantastic facilities for training their shooters. James Harding is head of clay shooting at Bradfield College, a public school with its own clay ground. What's the value of a day like today to, to the people, the boys, uh, boys and girls at Bradfield? Yeah, boys and girls. Um, it's well, it's obviously gives them experience of a real competition, and we practice every week with our coaches. Um, but it's nice to actually come and put it into action, and I think it uh, gives a sense of proportion to what they do every week. So you can be good on the practice, but the competition is is uh, what it's all about, and taking away trophies and so on. So. Does the school take it? as seriously as cricket, rugby, that sort of thing? I mean, it's not as such a well-established sport. We used to do it in the past, then it uh, fell into... Uh, we, we stopped doing it, and then um, we, we resurrected it about three years ago on the back of a private donation to set up a shooting ground in the school. So we've got our own stands and, uh, and traps and uh, a lot as well. So it's really building it up from scratch after a long period, 20 or so years of not doing it. So it's very much on the up. So. And, and are the parents keen on it? Very much so. We had a parental shoot last Sunday uh, where our coaches came and did their father and son, mother and daughter, uh, family shoot. So that's well supported by the parents. So we often get parents coming along to fixtures to uh, support the boys and girls. The kids come from a variety of backgrounds. George Riley is from fee-paying Magdalen College School in Oxford. Now you've just taken your protective glasses and your headphones off. You've just been shooting. How did you get on? Uh, well, I just shot um, a four out of six, I think, so that was good. You are widely fancied as a, as a, as a high gun today, do you, do you know that? Vaguely, uh, vaguely, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that because of your success here before? Have you shot here before? Uh, yeah, I have. Um, I shot, I think, 34 last year, and I shot at Prescott as well um, last year, so that was did, good. Did you win a prize for that? Uh, no, I came in fourth or fifth last year. But they're, they're, so. they're looking for better things for this year. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Good luck with that. Um, and uh, how many people from your school are here today? Just me. Oh, right. So you're, yeah. you're the sole representative. Yeah. All the hopes are with you then. Um, how many more stands have you got to shoot? Um, I think we've got about two or three, maybe. Good. Well, good luck with that. What are you, what are you shooting today? Uh, I'm shooting a 12 ball Browning. Are you? A 12 yeah. ball? Um, 12 ball. What age are you? Uh, twelve. Just gone. That's 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 quite. A, is that quite a big gun for somebody your age? Or yeah, we've just had the stock cut down a bit because I was struggling to get it in my shoulder. But yeah, it's it's nice size. Yeah. Here's thirteen-year-old Arthur Luff of Voluntary Aided Secondary School, Waddesdon C of E in Buckinghamshire. Well, I grew up in shooting because obviously my dad's gamekeeper. But I've been shooting for since I was about seven or eight. I think I started shooting. Um, and what sort of what sort of gun are you shooting today? What, what I'm price? shooting a 24 Silver Pigeon Beretta. The Oxford Gun Company does not just run this school's challenge day. It has another one which it does at Breeden School in Tewkesbury and it also organises a game day. Here's Arthur again. Um, we know the Florence very well and um, the people who run this yeah, day. Who, yeah and um, they um, asked if my dad would take the young the young shots day. Um, for the game and that, and um, Dad said, yeah, we're here to do that because it's probably one of the nearest shoots and um, that's how they got to so, so you're a guest here today, but you're, you're the host during the game shooting day later in the Well, in yeah, the year. yeah, I also shoot on the day as well, um, but yeah, everyone seems to think that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you shooting on the day itself? Um, I th I'm not quite sure. Sort of eight, ten, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, eight, ten yeah. drive, and we um, there's three teams. They do picking up, beating, and, and shooting. So. So you can entertain thirty people for a young yeah. shots day, and, yeah. it's th and this is this is all part of this sort of young shots thing they're doing here, isn't it? Yeah. Is is it good? Is it a good idea? Is it good value? Yeah, I think it's very good. Um, I obviously I like day shooting and that, and it brings obviously people that haven't been shooting for long much. Going sort of thing, so yeah. Back to the school's challenge, and staff from the main sponsor, Browning, are on hand to see the kids shoot. I ask Browning's David Stapley about the value of a day like this to his company. Is he here to sell guns? It's not really monetary value, it's getting new people involved in the sport, hopefully, using a Browning for the first time that they use, the, use a gun, which is always fantastic, uh, and getting people to cover uh, the new generation of shooters coming through. 
as well as the main competitions, there are plenty of sideshows, some with spectacular prizes. Webley has a stand for the air gun shooting. The best of the lot, however, is the Browning Rabbit Mania. We came up with the idea a couple of years ago, and the idea is it's fun. You know, it's not a serious thing. It's shooting from the back of the trailer uh, at four traps, and uh, the, they bounce all over the place, hence the Rabbit Mania and the new logos that we've designed as well. And we're now rolling this out to several shows and, and um, game fairs throughout the year, and it's becoming more and more popular, and we've been asked to attend various different events and... Uh, and uh, turn up and present the present the Rabbit Mania uh, brand, as it were. Now, um, incredibly difficult, isn't it? I mean, you don't have to be a great shooter; you have to be a lucky. Player, very you? lucky, yeah. As I've just proved, uh, I didn't do very well today. I, I did a bit better last weekend when we were at the shooting show at Newark, but uh, yeah, today was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> but I was using a different gun today. Well, the day's almost over. The trophies are waiting to be handed out. There's 170 very happy shooters out there. Let's see who's won. It's a high stakes day. As well as the silverware, Oxford Gun Company has gathered together £20,000 worth of prizes from sponsors to hand out to the kids, including shooting kit and Basque Young Shots memberships. First up, Ashfold School carries off the prep school's prize. Arthur Luff is the fourth highest shot in the prep school's class. He gets glory, but no prize. In the secondary school section, Millfield School wins the ladies with the Tudor Hall just behind it. A Tudor Hall girl, Serena White, wins the high gun prize. And last year's winner, Millfield's Laura Brasher, comes second. Millfield is, however, pipped into second place in the big event, the senior school's competition. The winning team is Seaford College. Bloxham and Rugby School's A-team come third. The winner of the Browning Rabbit Mania is Nathan Batchelor of Kynaton High. He walks away with a fabulous Browning 525 12-bore shotgun. This way, please. It's been a day and a half, and there's another one coming up in Gloucestershire on the 2nd of May. Visit www.theschoolschallenge.co.uk and click on the entry forms link to find out more. I, I